Hey everyone, welcome to my medical coding review series for professional coding or provider-based coding. So this is good for the CPCs as well as the CCSP. I'm gonna go over this in the order that the CPC curriculum covers it. So the CPC curriculum starts with the business of medicine, then introduction to ICD-10-CM, introduction to CPT, and then it starts getting into integumentary, musculoskeletal, etc. So I'm gonna go in that order, which would be starting with chapter seven if you're following following the CPC curriculum. So this is gonna cover the common CPT and ICD-10CM codes that you'll see for these chapters. And it's gonna hone in on a couple of case questions, things that you might see on the exam, similar type stuff. And we're gonna go through some of the more complicated concepts or things that I think they're more likely to test you on for the exam. Let's start out with what's covered in the CPT chapter for this section. So first there's fine needle aspiration and biopsy, which you need to look at things like the number of lesions as well as whether or not guidance was performed. Then we have our introduction and removal, and those are things like image guided drainage as well as uh, lesion localization devices, like if they're placing a clip. Then we have incision and drainage. So with incision and drainage, you need to know the difference between things like a simple drainage or complicated. A complicated is more something where they have multiple incisions or they're doing wound packing or they're placing drains. After that, we have our debridement codes. So debridement, you not only need to know the location, but how deep was that debridement? Was it in subcutaneous tissue? Was it in muscle tissue? And then you also need to know the sizing and you need to understand things like calculating square centimeters. And one of the cases that we're gonna go over will demonstrate the calculation of square centimeters. So for example, you need to know that if a provider documents that they have a wound that they debrided that was three centimeters by three centimeters and they're coded based off of square centimeters, you need to know that three by three is how you calculate the square centimeters. So three by three is nine and it's nine square centimeters. So that's the square centimeter size that you use to code off of. The provider does not need to document square centimeters. They just need to document like the area. So if it's three by four or five by 10, whatever that area is, and then you can produce that calculation from that. Then we have our pairing or cutting of lesions followed by biopsy of lesions. And those with biopsies, you need to know the method of the biopsy as well as how many lesions you're doing the biopsy on. You have to be careful though because there are shave biopsies and then you see a little bit further, we have shaving of epidermal lesions. So there's a difference there. The difference really is the intent. So is this shave done because we're looking at it and going, ooh, that looks like a suspicious lesion and we need to shave that off to send it to pathology, which means it's a, it's a biopsy. We're taking that sample out to analyze what that lesion is versus, oh, this is rubbing against my bra strap and it's really irritated and I'm worried that it might get infected. Can we shave that off so we don't wind up with an infection? That's not a biopsy. That's when we go into those other codes, the shaving or epidermal of dermal leave, it's a lesion. Uh, the skin tag removals, those are coded just based off of size. There's one for up to 15, and then there's one for each additional 10 or part thereof. So with the biopsies though, you need to be careful between those shaves versus these shaves, which are the shaving of the epidermal or dermal lesions. And the shave is just like a horizontal slicing. So it's like they take their, their scalpel and shave it right off the top layer of the skin. There's no actually incising into or, or going into the, the depth of the skin. Then we get into our excision codes. So we have excision of benign lesions and excision of malignant lesions, which means that we need to look at potentially a pathology report to determine if this lesion was benign, meaning non-cancerous, or malignant, meaning cancerous. So all those excision codes are coded based off of the benign or malignant, as well as the location and the size of the lesion are needed for a proper code selection. Next, we have nail procedures. So you might need to know how much of the nail was involved. You know, if we're removing an entire nail, uh, it could potentially even be things like how many nails were involved. Then we have pilonidal cysts. And there's three codes for those based off of the complexity. Are they simple? Are they extensive? Or are they complicated? Introduction includes things like lesion injections, filler injections, placement of tissue expanders, 
uh, even tattooing, which I talk about in one of my other videos about tattooing, and those are based off of square centimeters. Then we have our repair codes, and the repairs are broken down by simple, intermediate, and complex. Make sure you're familiar with the differences between the simple or intermediate and complex. Typically a simple closure is a one layer closure and then intermediate is layered closure or it could be a one layer closure where there was extensive debridement and then complex requires more than layered closure such as something like extensive undermining which I'll talk about in one of the cases we look over. With these repair codes if you have wounds that you're repairing or suturing in the same classification, they're all intermediate or they're all in that same classification in CPT, you can group the lengths together. So we'll, we'll look at this in one of the cases so you can get a good feel for what I'm talking about. Adjacent tissue transfers or rearrangements are different than just a complex closure because in this case, in order to code them, we need two defect sizes. So there's basically one defect, like let's say this is the, the hole of my sleeve here, and there's going to be a second defect because I'm going to cut some maybe tissue over here and rearrange it over and to fill this hole. So that's where that comes from. Those adjacent tissue transfers are we're taking one chunk of tissue that's deficient, taking another chunk of tissue and like rotating it in there. And that requires two sizes, the size of that primary defect and then the size of the secondary defect from that skin that we pulled over in there. So it's not just a undermining, it is really a requirement of two, two sizes in order to calculate the total square centimeters, which is what they're based off of. Adjacent tissue transfers are based off of not only uh, square centimeters, but your location as well. Then we have surgical preparation, and that's the cleaning and preparing of a wound bed prior to placing a skin graft on top of it. Autografts and tissue cultured autografts are when the patient's own skin is used and then relocated to another area. And then the skin substitutes, typically there's something that's maybe genetically engineered or it could be something like pig skin that is used to replace human skin. Now other flaps and grafts, those could be things like if we are doing uh, local tissue and it's rearranged or moved, sometimes you'll see like little nasal flaps or flaps in other areas that are on a pedicle and are rotated. Uh, there are some flaps I think that are done that are transferred via micro microvascular fashion as well. Our other procedures are things like our body contouring, so lifts of the eyes, lifts of the forehead, and you have to be very careful about things like the eyes because you wanna make sure you're using that modifier 50 there if you're doing a lift on both eyes or any procedure on both eyes. After that, we have our pressure ulcers, so our decubitus ulcers, and make sure that when you're looking at that documentation that it specifically says pressure or, de or decubitus ulcer because there's different codes for our pressure ulcers versus our non-pressure ulcers. With pressure ulcers, you have to pay close attention to the location of that pressure ulcer, as well as if there's any additional procedures you need to code for, like potentially a skin graft or separate coverage. Burns are based off of body percentage, and then there's also a code that's just for removal of Eshkar, which is essentially a, just a collection of dead tissue. Then we have destruction of lesions, and there's a difference in the way we code benign or pre-malignant versus malignant. So with benign or pre-malignant, it's just based off of the type and the number. So how many benigns did we do? How many pre-malignants did we do? And you know this is a destruction. So typically in most destructions, there is not a pathology report because you've essentially destroyed the lesion. There might be cases maybe where they've shaved it down before destroying it. Um, but in, in most cases with destruction, they're using something like uh, cryosurgery or electrosurgery to remove that lesion. So there isn't really a specimen afterwards in most cases. With malignant, they break down a lot more based off of location and based off of size. And this is more so for complexity purposes. After that, we have Mohs micrographic surgery, which is done a lot on the nose. And that's where the surgeon also acts as the pathologist. So the surgeon will take out a small chunk. We'll, we'll use the nose as an example. Take out a small chunk of nose, put it under the microscope, see if it's still cancerous tissue. If it is, they'll go back, take out another little scoop of tissue, look at that under the microscope until they've got clean margins. And once they've got those clean margins, 
then they, uh, you know, depending on the extent, they might repair it or they might send that patient then to a plastic surgeon to have a repair done of that, um, you know, deficient area of tissue. And then there's other procedures, things like acne treatment. First, we have our general breast procedures, which are things like biopsies or mastotomies or uh, drainages of cysts in the breast. Then we have our introduction, and that's things like drainage of abscesses, uh, placement of localization devices. The mastectomy procedures, you want to look for terms like partial, simple, radical, uh, lumpectomy, or even this includes mastectomies for patients that have gynecomastia, and this is common with male patients who have an excess of breast tissue or abnormal breast tissue that they can go in for this mastectomy where they're removing the male breast tissue because it's just overgrown, it's formed gynecomastia. Then we have our repair or reconstruction. This is done a lot for the patients who have had mastectomies. Now they're gonna reconstruct the breast. They do it through various means. They might rotate tissue from your abdomen, form that into a breast, from your back, form that into a breast. Sometimes they completely can separate the uh, tissue from your abdomen and do a microvascular transfer where you kind of get a little bit of a tummy tuck and then they form that into a breast, as well as things like if you are having a reduction or augmentation. And then for the other procedures, there's really only one other breast procedure, and that's just your unlisted breast code 19499. Now, with our ICD-10-CM codes, you might think about a lot of our lesion codes, and I wanted to remind you of one thing when it comes to lesion codes. When we are coding for lesions in ICD-10-CM, some of them have their own specific alphabetic index entry. Things like seborrheic keratoses, actinic keratoses, those are going to look you're going to look for those in the alphabetic index first if it doesn't have its own alphabetic index entry things like maybe a basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma those you're going to find in your neoplasm table so check in the neoplasm table for those and what it'll usually do is you'll go to let's say it is a squamous cell carcinoma of the shoulder you'll go into your neoplasm table look under neoplasm skin and then under skin, you go to shoulder, and then it'll give you the code and it'll have you go to the tabular list to find the additional uh, index entry to determine is it squamous cell, basal cell, melanoma, etc. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are lesion codes, but a bunch of them are just injuries and other skin disorders. When you see something that's in ICD-10-CM and it starts with C, those are typically cancer codes, so you can kind of correlate the C for cancer. You can see we here we have the malignant melanomas, malignant neoplasms, malignant neoplasms of breasts. The L codes are more of our skin and subcutaneous tissue disorders, bolus disorders, dermatitis and eczema, uh, papilloma squamous disorders, our arrhythmia codes, radiation-related disorders of the skin and tissue, which you may see for some of those debridement procedures, disorders of skin and appendages, intraoperative and postoperative complications of skin and subcutaneous tissue, other disorders of skin and subcutaneous tissue. We have our other disorders of uh, soft tissue. We have disorders of the breast and then all of our injury codes. So if we're coding for a repair, a laceration repair, that could happen in any area, head, neck, thorax, abdomen, shoulders, wrists, uh, knees, ankles. Those could, those could even be not just lacerations, but wounds of those areas. Uh, and those would be included in some of our integumentary things. We wanna make sure that we're paying close attention to to our uh, additional digits. So these are ones, those, those S codes, they're commonly going to need an additional digit to identify for the seventh character. Is it the initial, is it the subsequent, or is it the sequela? Remember that initial in ICD-10-CM doesn't always mean the same as the initial in CPT. So if we're talking about an initial hospital visit, that means it's that first visit. In ICD-10-CM, it means something else. So the seventh character A is used oftentimes in injuries to indicate that it is the initial, meaning it's in the active treatment phase. When it's subsequent, that means it's the healing phase of that injury. And the sequela is something that results after that injury. So in the case of a skin problem, it would likely be a scar. So you would use maybe that same S code, put on the seventh character D for sequela, and then you would put on secondary to that the code for the scar. 
And then lastly, we have those T codes for the different types of burns of surfaces in the area. Pay attention too to some of your external causes. So if we have a patient that has a burn, was it a chemical burn? Were they in a fire? So there might be some external things to think about there as well in the external cause section. Now, when we think about some of the things in the integumentary system, look at this diagram of the skin. So our very top layer of the skin is called the epidermis and underneath that is the dermis. Underneath that is what we usually refer to as the subcutaneous tissue, but you may also see it referred to as the hypodermis and underneath that is muscle. So when we're thinking about doing skin procedures and trying to figure out why sometimes there's different location methods, sometimes there's different sizing methods, and it kind of drives you a little bit batty because you're going, why doesn't this all just follow the same suit that, you know, trunk arms and legs are always grouped together or, or, you know, we go by two to five square centimeters and then six to, you know, it, the reason for this is there's a lot of different complications to think about. So one thing to think about is that as we look at this picture, you know, the further down you go, look at that, you're getting into arteries and veins when you're in that subcutaneous tissue, right? So there's an added complexity. So we want to have separate codes to calculate out for that separate complexity between a more superficial procedure versus something that's deeper, like a debridement that we might be going down to subcutaneous tissue or muscle. We're increasing our risk of infection the deeper we go. Also, the other thing to consider is, you know, if I'm having a half a centimeter lesion removed of my shoulder, I probably am not gonna care too much about that. I'll be like, eh, you know, my PCP can take that off. I'm not too concerned about it. But if I'm having a half a centimeter lesion removed from the tip of my nose, that's a lot more sensitive area. That's a lot more sensitive tissue, even my eyelid. That's a lot different right there, half a centimeter versus a shoulder. So I might want to go to a plastic surgeon versus a PCP to have that closed, you know, and there's a lot more complexity because it's closer to the eye or even on an earlobe maybe. Um, so there's areas that we have to consider that are more sensitive, that there could be more complexity because we don't want to you know, puncture someone's eye, even things like wider, you know, the more that we are doing to uh, open up an area that increases the risk of infection, increases the complications. So we're going to have different codes for different locations, different sizes, different uh, depths. So those are the really things you want to pay attention to when you're doing different types of coding for the integumentary system. Now let's get into some of these fun case studies. So here's my first one here. This is a patient that had a punch biopsy of a suspicious right upper skin lesion of the chest, minimal blood loss. We have a great procedure description here. Uh, area around the lesion was anesthetized and she gave consent for her procedure. Punch biopsy, including some portion of lesion and normal tissue was performed approximately 0.3 centimeters. Hemostasis was completed with pressure holding. The biopsy site was approximated with non dissolvable suture. The area was hemostatic, all counts were correct, and there were no complications. Patient tolerated the procedure well. She will see us back in approximately five days, so what's our CPT code? When we look at this, what are we doing? We're doing a punch biopsy, and we talked about how there's biopsy codes in the skin section, and this looks like it was a tiny little skin lesion that they were biopsying. So we're not gonna be looking into different weird areas of the you know, uh, breast or chest or lungs or an abdomen, anything like that. We're gonna stay within our skin coding section. So if we look in our CPT book, and I'll bring you guys over here. So we have three types of biopsy codes. Tangential is essentially a shave off that top layer. Then we have our punch biopsy, which is actually kind of like a hole punch, just a medical hole punch of your skin. And then incisional where they take a small wedge. So if we look here at our 11106, incisional biopsy of skin, simple closure when performed, single lesion. So this is basically telling us that this simple closure is included. So that little suturing that we the, the provider did is included in this. And then we have an add-on code for each additional lesion, but we only did one. So we're looking at this 11106. If we look at some of the other options that we have here, like our 11102, that would not be the right method. 11102 is a tangential, which means it's a shave biopsy, and that's not what we did. We did a punch. 11400, you know, we might think that looks okay because we're thinking, oh, we did an excision 
of the uh, skin. So 11400. 11400 is an excision of the skin, trunk, arms, or legs, and 0.5 centimeters or less. So we have the right size here. We have the right location. We don't have the right method because we didn't do a whole excision. We just did this little punch biopsy. We just took a little punch sample. This excision code is a full thickness excision, not just a, a punch biopsy sampling. And then that last option that we had here was this um, 11300, and that is also not the same method. 11300 is for a shave. So in this case, we did option B, which is our 11104. Now, this is the one that I talked about where we're gonna do some calculations. This is the math portion in medical coding, and it's not super intimidating. That's one of the questions that I get often is how much math is involved in medical coding. So it's not algebra, it's not calculus, anything like that. It's really just more so calculating square centimeters and uh, adding up lacerations. The integumentary system is probably where you see the most math in medical coding. So in this case, this patient has a diagnosis of a stasis ulcer of the lower extremity, and they had a split thickness skin graft totaling an area of 15 by 18 on the right leg, and then 15 by 15 on the left leg. So we have an indication 84 year old female presented with large ulcers of the lower extremities. These were representing on the order of 50% or more of the circumference of her lower leg. They were in a distribution to be consistent with stasis ulcers. They were granulating nicely and she was scheduled for surgery. Large ulcers of lower extremities with size as described above. These are irregular in shape and posterior and laterally on the lower legs. There was no evidence of infection. The ultimate skin grafting was quite satisfactory. So here's the procedure description. So we always have to make sure that this procedure section here, this little section here that says procedure, that it matches up to the procedure that was performed. So here where it says operation, we don't ever code exclusively based off of that. We use it as a good jumping off point, but we always wanna verify that that was actually what was done in this body, this whole description of the procedure below. So underneath this, what does it say? Having obtained adequate general endotracheal anesthesia, the patient was prepped from the pubis to the toes. The legs were examined and the wounds were pulsivaxed bilaterally with three liters of saline with Bacterin. The wounds were then inspected and there was adequate hemostasis and there was only minimal fibrous debris that needed to be removed. Once this was accomplished, the skin was harvested from the right thigh at approximately 0 0.013 inch. And this was meshed one to one to 0.5 and then stapled into position on the wounds. The wounds were then dressed with a fine mesh that was stapled in the positions as well as acrylic soaked in sulfamyline solution. What are the CPT codes? So in this case, we're gonna be coding for the split thickness skin graft. And we have two areas here. We have a 15 by 18 and we have a 15 by 15. And there's a lot of different options that we have here. Some of them involve different codes with different units. One has a 51 modifier on it. So what are we looking at here? So one of the first things I'm noticing is that we have one option that has a, um, that does not have this 15100. All of these have 15100 and some combination of 15101. So let's say I've got this on my exam. I'm looking at this, I'm going, I don't know. Um, this one has three, this one has four. This one has a totally different section. I, I'm not sure. W one of the first things you could do is just go and look at 15100 and 15101. Check out what those are in CPT and see what we're looking at and see if you can tell right away if there's a difference in these units, if a 51 is needed or not. Um, if there is a you know, difference here, like maybe this is the right location versus these others. So let's start with this. 15100 is a split thickness skin graft, trunk, arms, or legs, first 100 square centimeters or less. If we look back at the report, it says that these were ulcers of the lower extremities. They were harvested from the back of the thighs, which is a common area that they take skin grafts from. They remove them from the thighs, put it onto the lower legs. This is coded, actually, if you look at the guidelines based off of where it's going, not where they're taking it from, but where are they placing it ultimately, which technically is both still the legs. The other thing we want to look at is, is this the right type of graft, split thickness skin graft? So, yep, that's what they did. They took that, they, they meshed it, and they made it a split thickness, 
and that is the split thickness skin graft. You can verify that even in the uh, procedure description that they have that split thickness skin graft. The other thing though is now we have sizes. We have 100 square centimeters or less, but we don't have square centimeters. We have our, our uh, multiplication here, right? So we have to do some math. So we have to convert this into square centimeters. So if you look at the note, it says the first one was 15 by 18. So we wanna calculate what that equals. Then we have a 15 by 15. So 15 by 18 is 270. And then 15 by 15 is 225. Now we need to add both of these up. Five, nine, 495. So with this skin graft code, we need to know how many add-ons do we need. And it's each additional area or part thereof, which means we don't need a full 100 square centimeters. We just need an additional. So this would be almost kind of rounded up to 500. So how many times does 100 go into 495? So it would go in four with a remainder of 95, right? Four R95. But we can code this whole remainder as an additional unit. So it's actually five units. So we have the 400 and this part thereof is another unit as well. So it's a total of five and I apologize, my fives always look like S's, but it's five units or essentially it's rounded to 500 square centimeters. So first we have our 15100 and then we have 15101, one, two, three, four more times to make a total of five. The other way to kind of think about this is if maybe you take your 495, take off the 100 for your first, uh, first 100 square centimeters, then you're left with 395 which you then have three with a remainder of 95, and then you have your units of your add-on, which would be the times four, because here's your three, and then your part thereof, which you get another unit for. So 15100 for the first 100, 15101 for two, 15101 for three, 15101 for four, and then the part thereof, 15101 for that extra 95 that's left over. So let's go back and look at our answer. We have 15130 and 15131, and we determined that's not right because that's not the right uh, code for that, for that area for that split thickness graft. This one here, the 15100, that's not enough units, so that one is out. And then C and D are the same with the exception of the 51 modifier. So here's the, where they're really testing you is now they're saying not only do we want you to calculate the right size, but the 51 modifier is a key. And you could have possibly looked at this and eliminated C right away because that 51 modifier is on an add-on code and modifier 51 does not go on add-on codes. So since that 15101 is an add-on code, it doesn't ever get a modifier 51, which means that this is answer D, the 15100 and the 15101 with four units for the add-on. This is a case where you may look at it and it may seem kind of overwhelming. And I want you to look at two key things when you get a big case like this. Number one is what is it that they're asking you for? So don't spend a lot of time on this one trying to figure out the diagnosis because they're literally just asking you what is or are the CPT codes. So you're not gonna have to worry too much about the diagnosis, so don't focus on the diagnoses, just focus on more so the CPT. The other thing you can look at is go to that top where it says that procedure because that's gonna be our jumping off point. Now in this case, it's just saying excision of lesion. If we look at our answers, we have a couple options here. We have 11402, we have that same code, but then there's also a 12002 with the 51. And then we have a 11602, and then that same code with an additional code, 12002 with the 51. So let's take a look at the 11402 and the 11602. So let's take a look in our book. And these are excision of lesion codes, which is good because that's what it says in the procedure description, right? It says we have 11402 is an excise diameter of 1.1 to 2. 11602 is the same, but it's malignant lesion of the excise diameter 1.1 to 2.0. The other thing we're gonna look at is that 12002 code that's in options B and D. And 12002 is 
Simple repair of superficial wounds of scalp, neck, axilla, external genitalia, trunk, and or extremities, including hands and feet, 2.6 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. Now, when we understand some of the guidelines, this makes it easier because this simple repair code, if you look at the definition in CPT of coding for excision codes, if we go into excision of benign lesions, it tells us excision is defined as full thickness through the dermis removal of a lesion, including margins and includes simple non-layered closure when performed. You can report separately for intermediate or complex, but simple are all included, which means that's included in this code and we don't code separately for an additional CPT for that simple closure. It's included, it's bundled into the lesion excision. So now let's go back and take a look at this report. So this says it's uh, the pre-op is a nevus, the post-op is a squamous cell carcinoma. With lesions, we code based off of the post-op diagnosis because that's the most definitive. The procedure was excision of lesion. We have the anesthesia at lidocaine 2% with epinephrine. Indications in counseling, they discussed the medical indications, they discussed the um, risks of the procedure, the likelihood of bleeding, etc., etc., and then we get into our procedure description. And it says here, the area surrounding the skin lesion was prepped and draped in usual fashion. So that's our preparation method. Skin overlaying the lesion was infiltrated with anesthetic. Incisional area overlying skin was planned and marked the skin marker. So they got out their purple surgical marker, marked out the ellipse that they wanted to excise. And then a two centimeter by two centimeter excision using a number 15 blade scalpel was made over the identified lesion of the right forearm. Dissection of surrounding or overlying tissue was performed to isolate, expose, and remove lesion utilizing a number 15 blade scalpel under direct visualization. Excised lesion was collected and sent to pathology for analysis. And then the final closure was performed with three centimeter simple interrupted sutures on the forearm. So here's the key things we wanna pull out of here. Our code selections that were offered are a benign or malignant. Well, this turned back to be a squamous cell carcinoma, right? So that is a malignant lesion. So we're gonna use our malignant lesion code. That carcinoma there, that means it's cancerous, like carcinogen means something is cancerous. So since we know this was malignant and those 11402s are benign lesion codes, we can kind of eliminate those right away out of it. And the next thing with our options is we have one that's just the CPT and one that has a closure code. So this, if we were coding for the closure, would be the right code, however, Remember what we just looked at at the guidelines, this is included. So we don't code separately for that because it's included. So in this case, it's just our 11602. We're gonna code for the excision of a cancerous lesion that was two centimeters. Now, ideally in the documentation, they should have documented the lesion size and then the margins and then the total, but this is the way they'll phrase it in the CPC exam. So I kind of wanted to keep it true to the exam format. And just to show you where we're pulling that size from is this two by two centimeters. So this isn't something where we're calculating square centimeters. They're coded based off of the centimeters. And if you look in your CPT book, like the coding actually for lesions is based off of the widest excise diameter plus the narrowest margins. But in this case, they're just saying two by two. Um, and in those cases, you would use whatever is the widest area. So if they're saying it's a two by three lesion and they excise the entirety of the lesion, we would just assume that that three then is that widest diameter. Um, you know, ideally they should be putting margins, but again, I'm trying to keep this true to the way they more so format it for the exam. You're gonna see a wild variety of ways that lesions are documented when working uh, as a coder. Now, in this case, it's a CPT code that they're looking for. They give that to you right away. It's a shorter one, right? Destruction of seven pre-malignant lesions and five benign lesions using cryosurgery. And if you go back to what I talked about with those destruction codes, the destruction codes have kind of a differentiation there between, remember I said some are just number and type, and then some of them are 
the size and location, but the size and location are cancerous ones. In this one, we're just looking at pre-malignant and benign lesions. In this case, our options are kind of varied. We have a 17004 here. This one has a 17110. This one has a 1700. Okay, these two are kind of similar. So maybe we'll start here. We'll kind of look at these 17000 codes. This one has a 17003, but then this one is a times six, and this one's a 17004. This is kind of crazy. All right, well, let's start with this 17000. Actually, we could even start just by looking at our destruction code. So let's flip over to our 170s. Okay, so here are our destruction codes. And when we look at this, we have seven premalignant and five benign. So what is first here is our premalignant. We have a first lesion, we have second through 14, and these are each, they're each code. So it's in addition to, but what is this? What is this? This is a premalignant 15 or more. Did we do 15 or more? No, we did seven. So these are each, which means we added on each, each time. So each that's a key word you'll probably want to have that highlighted underlined or something so in this case we have our pre-malignant one and then we're going to do two three four five six seven right so we would need six of these for pre-malignant and then we have five benign let's look at our benigns so here are our destruction cutaneous vascular that's not a benign this is our benign benign lesions other than skin tags or cutaneous vascular so we have this code and this is up to 14 or 15 or more. So which did we do out of these? Did we do our up to 15 or four, 15 or more? Well, we did up to 14. This one is structured totally different. It's not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. This is just sectioned between up to 14, 15 or more. So in this case, we're just gonna need one of these. We're gonna need 17110. So let's go back and look at our answers that we have here. Um, 17004, well that's not right because that's our code for 15 or more and we didn't do 15 pre-malignants, we did 7. 17110 is for up to 14 of the benign and then we're adding on a 17003 which is additional uh, ones for pre-malignant, that's not quite right. Even if we go back to our CPT book, it says this 17003 has to be used with 17001. And in that option, it's using it with the wrong code. So definitely, no, these two are out. We're not gonna do this one. We're not gonna do this one. Um, 1700, 17003, 1004, 171's, no. So we needed a quantity in there and that's not, that's not it. This is what we're looking for. So right here, we've got our 17000, which was that first premalignant lesion. 17006, which counts for the extra premalignant lesion. So now we have the 1700, 17003, 17003, 17003, 17003, 17003, 17003. Now we have all seven. So we have six there and then the uh, primary code. And then 17110 is our code for that benign lesions, and that's up to 14. And we have less than that, we have five, so that's within that up to 14. And that's the code that we're looking for, 17000, 17003 times six for each additional, and then 17110. So that key word each there can really impact something, right? Because it, we could have easily gotten fooled and gone, oh, this is probably like the other one where if it's two through 14, we just add that on, but it's not. It is for each lesion, which means you have to have, have to add, add it on for each lesion. Now in this one, I wanna demonstrate how we add on for repair codes. So this is what CPT codes are reported for a pair of a five centimeter layered closure of the left arm, two centimeter layered closure of the left arm, and three centimeter layered closure with extensive undermining on the right arm. So this is not unlike something that I got tested on with the COC exam because they're really testing you on your knowledge of the different types of closure, what layered closure constitutes as far as simple, intermediate, and complex, as well as how you can combine the lengths. So let's start out looking at our answers, right? So we have 12032 in most of them, 
This one has a 12034, so let's just take a look at those. So if you look at 12032, it is a repair intermediate of wounds of the scalp, axilla, trunk, and or extremities, excluding hands and feet, and it is 2.5 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. So that's the code that's in the A, B, and C selections. Now, what they're testing you on here though is, you see this word intermediate, what terminology did we use in the question? It said layered closure. Now what they're really testing you on here is your understanding of the terminology. So in the question, does it say intermediate closure? No, it says layered closure. So how do we know if this intermediate and layered is the same thing? Well, you have to be familiar with the definitions that are in CPT of the simple intermediate or complex repair. So what I will tell you is that essentially a simple repair is a one layer closure. A intermediate repair is a layered closure or it could be a one layer closure where there was um, maybe a little bit of a debridement. They had to get rid of particulate matter. Complex closure is more than layered closure. So there may have been bone involvement. There may have been neurovascular involvement that had to get uh, corrected as well or there could have been extensive undermining, which is also defined in CPT. Undermining is like a sweep underneath. So let's say that this is the laceration that we're repairing. The undermining is what they do when they kind of go underneath their scalpel and free this tissue under here. And that way they can close up a gaping hole a lot um, easier with less tension. And that undermining though, for it to be considered extensive, has to go underneath as long as it is wide. And that is all in your CPT book. It is all defined and laid out there. Now let's go back to this question. What can we combine? So we can combine anything that's in the same type of closure and in the same group. And what I mean by group is if you look at the CPT definition, scalp, axilla, trunk, and extremities, excluding hands and feet, we can combine something that's on the scalp with a trunk with an extremity all within that group here defined by CPT if they're also an intermediate repair. If one of them's simple, then they can't be grouped. If one of them's complex, then they can't be grouped. But we can combine a scalp and a trunk laceration if they are both of the same type and both in this group here in CPT. Our next group that we could see here would be uh, neck, hands, feet, or external genitalia. Those could be combined. So we could combine something from the neck and something from the feet as long as they are both intermediate repairs. So in this case, these layered closures of the arm and the leg are both intermediate. They are both in that grouping. So we have the five plus the two, which equals seven. This is fun to write on with the uh, pen. So that's seven. So we're gonna code that group to a seven centimeter total layered closure because we can combine these but this here says it has extensive undermining. And extensive undermining on a layered closure means it's a complex closure. So this is a three centimeter complex closure. So complex closure. So we have a seven centimeter repair of the arms, trunk, chest region of total seven square centimeters, I'm sorry, seven square, seven centimeters and then the three of the complex. So if we look in our book and we look for a seven centimeter total of the arms, legs, trunk, etc. area, that brings us to that code over here. So the 12032, 2.6 to 7.5, that includes our seven centimeters of the areas here, which would be our left arm and our left leg, because those are both extremities, we can combine them. So in that case, our first code is gonna be the 12032. Next, we have that layered closure that has extensive undermining. So that's not an intermediate, that is a complex closure. So complex closure of the right leg, three centimeters. So here we have, oh, look at this. This isn't even the same type of group. So we really have to pay attention to these groups because this one isn't trunk, arms, legs, etc. We have just trunk and then down here is our scalp, arms, and legs. 
and we're looking for a three centimeter. So three centimeters is down here. One, three, one, two, one is our 2.6 to 7.5, which is where three centimeters is. So that's where we are here. So if we go back to our question, so that's what we have. We have our 12032 for that total of the seven centimeters intermediate and the 13121 for that three centimeters complex closure. Complex closure meaning it is a layered closure with extensive undermining or again, more than a layered closure. There was neurovascular repairs, there was bone or muscle involvement. That is what constitutes complex closure. So that is the end of the integumentary. I will be back soon with next is musculoskeletal. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this is not intended to be a full review of the entire integumentary section. That would be something that you would get into a class. This is just a review, a supplement for those that are going through some curriculum or need a refresher to point out a few things that are pertinent or a little bit more harder to understand in this section. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure you hook me up with a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next for the musculoskeletal section. Until then, you just keep on coding on.